Hello and good afternoon. My name is Martin Coward and welcome to Noonday Meditation and Contemplative Prayer Power Hour, where we gather at noon every day, Monday through Saturday, right here on Facebook Live from all around the world to love and support each other through this pandemic. Make no doubt about it. We are in the middle of a huge crisis and it can be painful and it can be fearful. We all have a responsibility to wake each other up to the truth. And that's the underlying reason. That's my why for creating this is that I want to share with you what I've discovered about truth and who I am. So you can have that. And when I discover the truth of who we are, we have the freedom to participate in uh, creating a new world, creating a new earth and being part of this of this evolutionary process that we're going through right now. It's a very exciting time to be there. But we've got to we've got to We've got to be have, have the courage to step into the truth and accept our responsibility, one, for how we got here and how we get out of here. Because I don't know about you, but for a lot of us in, growing up in Western culture, we have a very, we received a very elementary education when it comes to God. I grew up in Southwest Georgia and I attended Sunday school at the Presbyterian Church. I, I was the only one in my family that went to church, really, on a regular basis. And what I learned was a set of beliefs about what God is. Uh, and my friends went to the Baptist, who went to Baptist school, they went to the Baptist church to learn about what Baptists believe God to be. As if each denomination has a certain set of beliefs about God. And they do. The only problem with those beliefs about God is they get in the way of your union with God. Think about that for a second. All beliefs are, are thoughts. There are thoughts that are repeated over and over and over again till they become a belief. And every single thought we have ultimately is it a judgment and an opinion about the world that comes from the ego. It comes from the limiting belief systems of our minds, of the human mind, the binary human mind. And the only thing that can separate us from our union with the divine is the mind. So we were learned, we were taught, most of us were taught in the Western world how to separate ourselves from God. And it's time we, we let go of those old belief systems and structures and accepted the truth that we are within us. That is the essence of who we are. I mean, it was very clear, the most powerful, probably the most powerful statement in scripture is be still and know that I am God. Very clear. I am God. When you make that statement, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the most profound claim we can make. And it is the truth. Not the little me, Martin Coward over here, but the essence of who I am, the presence, the life force, the creative life force within us is the divine spark of life. And most of us do not learn that growing up in Western culture and in Western religion. So what's one of the reasons why I come on here every day is to help people understand there's a higher dimension of our relationship with God. We are the divine self. And, to, and that's how we get our power. That's how we claim our power. Because when we bring... And we can't, with our mind, bring that into being. But what we can do is through a contemplative practice like this, like we do every day, is we can create the conditions and we can ask for the presence of God to come into, our, into, into that moment, if you will. And it's a moment-to-moment -moment thing. It is, it is getting cl clear in the moment. It's, there is no other moment, actually. It's, it's getting really clear in the reality that that moment that you're in is the divine life itself. And you're it. And I'm it. 
And therein lies all our power. So what I was going to say, and the reason why it's so important that we all wake up to this truth is because we, we as a, oh, there's Derso. How are you, Derso? Nice to see you. I think you're my neighbor over here in New Jersey somewhere. Isn't that right? And if you could do like Darso just did and type in hello in your chat box, it really helps me to um, to know you're here and to see you're here. And I can say hello to you because, uh, again, we're here in in collaboration with each other to wake each other up. We have a shared responsibility in waking each other up to the truth because we often get we get disconnected from God. And, and, and fear and darkness and shame and our ego thinking mind is always looking for ways to pull us into the drama of the world and separate us from the divine self. And it is through this separation and it is, it is in this darkness and in the ego's needs to have its needs met that we've created a pretty toxic planet because we live in a fear that there's not enough. You know, the e from the ego's mind perspective, there is never enough. There's never enough money. There's never enough resources. There's never enough from, there's never enough for me. It's a very, nar it's a narcissistic perspective of the world that I'm a separate entity. There's nothing, I'm not connected any other way. I'm just a separate entity and I've got to do everything I can to get my share and to protect myself. And it's out of that mindset, that scarcity mindset, that we have created a very, very toxic world. And I am, it seems to me like, I don't, I don't know really, but it seems to me like <laughs> that the Divine Mother has given us a great big protective slap like a mother bear to the cub to wake us up, to stop us in our tracks, to look inside ourselves for the solution. How do we get out of this crisis? How do we move us into, and we can't do it at the ego thinking mind that got us in the crisis. So the first thing we have to do is we have to take responsibility for the fact that there's a part of us and all of us that got us here. We got here because we're the ones that are here right now and who else created it but us. <laughs> There is no other, there are another, there are another, no other human beings, many humans, one being. So as we, we individually and collectively helped create that, help, help get us here. And the beauty of that realization, when we wake up to that truth is that we feel once we realize we're responsible for how we got here, we had a part in playing how we got here. There is no other there is no other being out there but one. Then we also have the privilege and the honor and the joy to we feel called. We feel called to creating something from love and joy and prosperity. And that's what this is all about. This is about this is about playing big because we are big. And so we have a responsibility. If you're playing small and you're blaming other people and you're thinking it's not your fault and, you know, it's those Republicans or that president or those Democrats, those liberals, those conservatives, you're not there. I'm telling you, you're still playing a part. If you're in that space, you are still playing your part in creating this drama. That's it. I know that's hard for some people to hear. But just go on Facebook and just and just listen to people feeding the drama machine on Facebook, just feeding good, good hearted people that I, some of them my friends that I love dearly. And I know I know they have good intention, but what they're doing through their anger at, at maybe Trump or the administration is they're just fueling the fire of fear and drama. TV does it. That's why I don't watch the news too much, because it just feeds the news broadcast companies are there to make money and they know we human beings are addicted to fear. So they just feed us more drama to pull us more in to the fear of what's going on in the world. And that's how we created this mess. And that's, and that's how, uh, that's what I mean. We are all responsible when we get that because we're all, there's only, like I said, there's many humans, one being, and we're all one being. So there is no other being that created it, but us. <laughs> 
And the beauty is that one being is a loving, creative force of the universe. And we wake up to that truth within ourselves. We become grounded in that truth of love and creativity. And we're able to let go of the, the narcissistic, destructive natures of fear and darkness and enjoy the light of truth in the world. We're all connected through love and light. It is only the shadows that disconnect us. We can't see it. We can't experience it. And we get an illusion of something else. So when we wake up to this truth, everything changes. That's called transformation. And we and before we can participate in the transformation to a new earth, we have to we have to go through that transformation first within ourselves. And that's why I'm here to give you an opportunity to look at this and step into a contemplative practice, go in deeper and, and, and have that transformational experience within an aha moment within you. Aha, I am the divine self. Once I get still and listen, I like, aha, I am. You can feel that presence rising up within you. And there's no desire to blame others. You just want to, you just want to share, share it and contribute to moving us into a more, a less toxic and more life friendly planet. OK, so we have a we all have a responsibility to participate in that movement. And that's exciting. It's an exciting way to live. I'm going to read a little bit today from Richard Rohr. He wrote a really nice piece, I thought, which prompted my conversation just then. It's called True Self, Separate Self. And for those of you who don't know who Richard Rohr is, he is a Franciscan brother and he is a Roman Catholic priest and he is the founder of the Center for Action and Contemplation in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And every night he puts out a meditation. And I have to tell you, they have been, for contemplatives like me, they have been an inspirational source of truth. How do we find truth? We get quiet, we read about truth, we, we, we watch videos about truth, we get, we get educated. We, we, are, we are educating ourselves in a more advanced form of the wisdom of the truth. Something most of us in this country did not get when it came to education about the divine. So pay attention to that. You know, pay attention to that. Okay. <laughs> the idea of two separateness is suffering. It is. I know for myself yesterday, I felt very disconnected from, from God yesterday morning. I felt sad. I felt depressed. Um, and I felt like, and I felt like a victim. I knew that I was separated because I felt like a victim. If I'm feeling like a victim or if I'm feeling like I want to hurt somebody or blame somebody, or if, even if I want to rescue, and that's, that's for me, the, the hardest one for me, because I have, I do experience a, a higher level of consciousness a lot of the time. And, and then I, I, I see people suffering and I want to, I want to go and just snatch them out, but they've got, you know, pull them out of the, and rescue them from the, their own suffering. But that doesn't work. I have to let go of my knee. It's not because it's not me that does it. It's my, it's my ego thinking I can help you. The only thing that can help wake you up is for presence in me to wake you up. So when I come here and meditate, I am bringing presence. I am aware that presence is alive and well. And I'm speaking from that. And I need the spirit. I need these readings. I need truth. All these things I share with you, I, I have to... I have, I can only give you what I, what I, ha what I have. So I have to have it too. And I practice these things myself. Um, so separateness is suffering. The idea of two selves within every individual, the true self and the separate self is a part of the perennial wisdom and pathway for transformation in most faith traditions. I share the thoughts of two writers, a rabbi and a Sufi sheikh, sheikh, an elder, on why this teaching is so central to mature spirituality. 
the rabbi Rami Shapiro says, the term perennial philosophy refers to a foretold realization. There is only one reality. Call it among other names, God, Mother, Tao, the Tao, Allah, Brahman, or Great Spirit. That is the source and substance of all creation. That while each of us is a manifestation of this reality, most of us identify with something much smaller. That is our culturally conditioned individual ego. That this identification with the smaller self gives rise to needless anxiety unnecessary suffering and cross-cultural competition and violence. And that peace, compassion, and justice naturally replace anxiety, needless suffering, competition, and violence when we realize our true nature as a manifestation of this singular reality. Or as I said, wake up to the truth of this reality. The great sages and mystics of every civilization throughout human history have taught these truths in the language of their time and culture. Now I want to read from a Sufi elder, Kabir Helsinki. Education, as it is currently understood, particularly in the West, ignores the human soul or essential self. This essential self is not some vague entity whose existence is a matter of speculation, but our fundamental I, which has been covered over by social conditioning and by the superficiality of our rational mind. In North, Amer in North America, we are a great we are in great need of a form of training that would contribute to the awakening of the essential self. I'm going to say that again because that's what we're doing here. In North America, we are in great need of a form of training that would contribute to the awakening of the essential self. Such forms of training have existed in other eras and cultures and have been available to those with the yearning to awaken from the sleep of their limited conditioning and know the potential latent in the human being. So by waking up, we wake up our potential that's lying dormant within ourselves. That's the idea of waking up to the truth. This enormous power is lying dormant within us right now, if you haven't woken up to it. And it's not like once you wake up to it, it's not like you wake up to it once. Let me back this up a little bit. Once you realize it, you cannot unrealize it, but you can you can separate. You will separate from it. And then you've got to go back. To, that's what we call the practice. Then you've got to go back to practicing a, a contemplative technique like prayer to reconnect ourselves to it. Because the human mind can't connect you to it. <laughs> you can't enlighten the human mind but you can create the conditions with practice for that presence to come, to come in, into existence. And then the more you practice it, the more frequently that presence is available to us. This summer, I created a webinar called Practicing the Art of Being Present, Your Keys to Living a Life of Love, Joy, and Prosperity. And if you'll send me an email, I'll be glad to send you, I'd love to get some feedback on it. I haven't really published it yet, but um, I would love to get, uh, I see you're here, Rohit. I'd love to get your, I'd love to send it to you and give your thoughts and your feedbacks on it. Because this is, this is, this is my dilemma with that is that, um, this is how I did it. I, I started creating this, just, uh, I created, I, was, I started wanting to create this, just a webinar on, uh, a short webinar on how to meditate and teach my clients, my prosperity coaching clients, how to meditate what I do. So I began to create this. And what was really profound was as I began to write out and create and think about how to teach what I do 
I began to practice what I was teaching. They say, if you want to master something, teach, and it's very true. So, uh, so as over the summer, I was practicing what I was going to teach. And the beauty of this is by the end of the summer, the practice was so effective that I actually now begin have begun to live more in presence than not. I live in that power more than, and that's, and that power is what guides me through the day. And it's a much more exciting way to live because now I become the instrument for presence to express itself in the world. And that's what I'm doing right in this moment. And you can too. That's the point of the responsibility of waking up. Once I woke up to the truth, now I want to help others wake up because that's, that just becomes innate within the process, in the transformational process, is that once we've gone through that ourselves, we feel a calling, if you will, a, a longing to wake up others by sharing our truth, by simply sharing it. Okay. How I digress sometimes. There are key reasons that the center of action and contemplation is dedicated to reinvigorating the teaching of Christian contemplation. The consistent practice of contemplation helps to uncover our true reality, essential self or fundamental I, the big I. Unfortunately, separateness is the chosen stance of the small self which has had a hard time living in unity and love with the diverse manifestations of this one. Reality, ourselves, other people, and everything else, the small self takes one side or the other in order to feel secure. It frames reality in a, ban in a binary way. It frames reality in a binary way. Let me, let me, um, here's, hey, Ra hey, Rohit, thanks for picking up on this awesome topic. Yeah, I think it is an awesome topic today, and you're so welcome. And thank you for being here. And I would like to send you um, my new webinar that is in, it's, I've completed it, but it's not been released because I could, I want to, I might need to make some edits to it. Because I said before, it's the, the challenge now is to be able to, to master the teaching of it uh, so that you get what I got. And I think that just comes from doing it and getting feedback on what would make it more powerful. So um, I don't know if I've still got your email address, but if you could send it to me um, in the messenger, I would love to send you that, um, that webinar and get your thoughts about it. The small self, the ego self, takes one side or the other in order to feel secure. It frames reality in a binary way, for me or against me, totally right or totally wrong, my group's or another group's opinion, all dualistic formulations. See, that's the problem with the elementary teachings that we all received as a child. It's the Baptist, it's the Baptist way or the Protestant way or the Catholic way or the Jewish way or the, but it, there is no, there is no, there is no other God than the one. <laughs> that is the best the small egotistical self can do. Yet it's not anywhere close to adequate. It might be an early level of intelligence, but it's not mature wisdom. The small self is still objectively in union. The stall, this is it. The, the small self is still objectively in union with God. It just, just, it just does not know it, enjoy it, or draw upon it. Jesus asked, is it not written in your own law, you are gods? That comes from the book of John. But for most of us, this objective divine image has not yet become the subjective likeness. Our life's goal is to illustrate both the image and the likeness of God by living in conscious, loving union with God. 
And it is a moment by moment choice and surrender. And I'm going to lead, read that last sentence one more time. But for most of us, this objective divine image has not yet become the subjective likeness. It's still an, God is still an object. It, we are not, it is not the subject. And to wake up, we become the subject. We begin to see the world as one, as, as the subject. We are the subject. There is no objective. Our life's goal is to illustrate both the image and the likeness of God by living in conscious, loving union with God. It is a moment by moment choice and surrender. Powerful stuff, right? Particularly right now as we're all trying to support, love and support each other through this really Okay, I will. I will definitely. Uh, yeah, I would definitely send it to you, Rohit. And uh, and thank you for again for being here. And thanks for offering to to take a um, to take a look at that for me because it's. Um, I'm excited about. I'm excited about the webinar. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm 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 telling it in a way that will be transformational for the people who take it. Uh, I don't want it to be just an intellectual exercise. I actually want it to be a, an opportunity that's exper experiential and transformational. So let's let's meditate. Let's get into some heart space. Let's get into some heart space today. I love getting into some heart. Let's get into the truth. Let's step into that essence. with the here we go insight timer so let's start by raising raising your arms in the air and just hold them still and as you're holding them still allow yourself to feel the presence of life within them Just get still and feel the life within your hands, now within your toes, and begin to embody the spirit, embody the life energy. And you can raise your hand, put your arms down now. And get still. Listen for the spaces between my words. Let go of any beliefs, opinions, judgments, stories about yourself, about the world, about me, about God, about COVID-19, about politics. Let them go. Hold on to nothing. And if you happen to notice that you're you're, you're, you're struggling with something. You're trying to solve a problem. Maybe the problem is, how do you get out of this mess we're in? The invitation is to surrender it. Let it go. Literally, energetically, surrender it. Just say, I, I surrender this. I do not know how to get out of this. I surrender even trying to a higher power within me to guide me and show me the answer. You can invite presence in to support you.
I practice a form of contemplative prayer called centering prayer. It's a form of prayer founded by Thomas Keating. It's very simple. I love the simplicity of it. Be still. Quiet the mind. And as thoughts come up, let them go. Because they're going to come up. There might even come up a thought about wanting to enter into a certain state of consciousness. Again, that's a thought. Let it go. Become present. Listen to the space. Feel into the space between my words. Notice your thoughts. When's Martin going to speak again? Let it go. It doesn't matter. <laughs> That's the first interval bell. There'll be two more. Allow the interval bells to wake you up from thought. Often a trance of thought. We think we're meditating. <laughs> we might even think we're having our best meditation. We're not meditating at all. We're in a thought. We're lost in a thought. So wake up from the thought. And listen to the space. Find that space before the thought.
Uh -huh. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me. Is there anything you'd like to add in the chat? Please do. Any ahas? Any frustration? Any struggle? Please share your experience and ask your questions. Is there any support you need today in this moment? Is there any story or belief you're holding on to as we're having a difficult time getting go of? Are you feeling a victim of anything? Do you want to blame anybody? Do you feel like you need to be rescued or do you want to rescue somebody else? These experiences are not wrong. They're just the ego doing its thing. And that's what love and support is about. It's about helping each other wake up from our egoic trances. Get us unstuck. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you for bringing your presence into, bringing our presence into the light. May love and prosperity prevail.